on guys this video is going to be about Earl Thomas going to show some highlights and basically I'm trying to figure out why this man is not in the league well I know why he's not it has a lot to do with emotions being overly emotional not controlling your emotions and not understanding the business and how it works and this happens to so many guys it's not just him but this guy is such a good player and it just shows you like you can be mega talented you can have everything all the gifts that god gave you but if you don't have it upstairs and if you're overly emotional you're going to be watching from the sidelines you're going to get shunned by the league and he's a great example of this time and time again so at first i'm going to show you some of his game film and then i will uh show you some of his uh this interview that i found on him and basically this interview will show a lot of the reason why he's still not in the league without further ado let's check him out on tape actually hold on let me make sure i got my speed all right here we go so right off the bat they're bringing four guys you can see one two three four and then a fifth linebacker so it's either it's a man blitz because this guy's man to man. These guys are backed off on man. You could tell it's a man blitz. Running back, running back. So Earl Thomas is going to be probably one of these two guys. I can't tell from here. Let's see what he does. Hikes it. Throws it up. Look at Earl. Look at Earl. He's playing both of them. Granted, these two guys are in the same spot. Like, obviously, this one of these two guys messed up. They're not supposed to be running the same route. So that allows Earl Thomas to make the play. So it was probably a rigged play for him to make this. But either way, he makes the play. You're telling me that with all those teams out there, not one team needs a free safety? You give up 56 points, you want to tell me you don't need a free safety? Okay. So this man comes down with it. Awful throw, terrible throw. Like we can tell it's a terrible throw. They ran terrible routes, but guess what? This guy capitalizes. You make a mistake, he's going to capitalize. Look at it. He's the only one reading the ball. The receivers are still watching the ball, and he's already jumping up in the air because his reactions and his ball skills are second to none. He got that. Lineman can't bring him down. Didn't really make a good effort. This is what you get from this guy. <clears throat> but this is on the field. I'm going to show you what you get off the field. See, he's a dog. Look at him cutting by people. He does everything. All right. And just keep in mind, Baltimore let this guy go over a little tiff. So it shows you, like, they just didn't want to deal with him. They were sick of him. You don't let go of a player like this unless, unless he is messing up royally like he's got to be a complete cancer and a complete annoyance and right here you can see him in the run game baltimore brings him in the box for a blitz so you see he can play the pass and right here you can see him play the run so they bring him up on a blitz he shoots the gap right by the tackle perfectly that's so hard to do then he breaks down makes the tackle he actually went through the running back and then got to the quarterback on the read option and stopped the play on fourth and one. A lot of safeties would have tackled the running back not reading the ball, and then the quarterback would have made it. But <laughs> this man, Earl Thomas, is on another level. He's got eyes on the back of his head, legs, arms. It's crazy. We already know about how good number 15 is. All right, this is against the Patriots. So we saw him make a play against... Mahomes, now this is going to be against the great one. Well, the anointed great one by the NFL. This is probably Earl. I'm assuming. I could be wrong. Yeah, that's Earl. Look at how he broke on the ball, guys. <clears throat> Brady's already thrown the ball. Look at Earl already in the picture. All right, let's back up a little. So this is Brady. He's throwing to Edelman. Look at Earl. Earl does read tape a lot. So he knew this was coming. He knows what they like to do. He sees Edelman. He baited the throw. 
Brady's throwing right now, and look at Earl. He's already driving full speed. Edelman's just turning around. Guess who's going to get there on time? Earl! Look at how he sells out and launches his body. Most guys cannot and will not do that in the NFL just because they're paid guys. They're not going to sacrifice their body any more than they have to. Most guys would have let that go through, but not this guy. He sells his body short. Even though his teammate could have made the play, he still didn't make a risk. So on the field, I'm seeing no problems right now at all. So it looks like him over here. Yeah, they bring him on the blitz. Actually, no, that wasn't him. That was a strong safety. He's back deep. He's back deep. Oh, look at him. Look, See how back deep he gets? He always has your back. As a free safety, I've never seen Earl Thomas out of position. I've never seen Earl Thomas get beat deep. You watch all these other safeties in the league. This is usually where they end up. They All the other safeties would be here. But look at Earl Thomas. He has the depth. He has the knowledge. He has the wherewithal. He's high-pointing it. All the awareness. He's easily the best free safety since Ed Reed. It's not even close. There is no better free safety in the league. I don't care what anyone says. The Honey Badger is not a free safety. Like He does sometimes, but he's really a strong safety. He plays both. Uh, Harrison Smith, same thing. He plays both. <laughs> this man, Earl Thomas, is a true free safety who plays in the box. It's not He's not a player that plays in the box that can play free safety. He's a free safety that can play in the box. That's what you want. All right, here we go. They send him again? Nope. Look at Earl. See, he's at the football every time. He's always around the football. But let's let's see out. Let's see what happened right here. <clears throat> let's make sure there was no foul play because we do know the NFL is fake. So Giovanni Bernard catches it, and he loses it. That looked like a fake fumble, guys. Honestly, I'm not even gonna try to lie to you. I know this is about Earl Thomas, but that fumble. Is fake. He's already letting go of the ball. Earl already sees the ball. Like, that was just planted for him, it looks like. He should have cut back outside. He didn't see it. He should have picked the ball up. That's why the when coaches always tell you when you get the ball off the ground, go right to the sideline because that's where the green grass is. He should have done that because the middle, that's where everyone is. You never want to run to the middle. You want to go right to the sidelines. Ooh, look at Jimmy. Look at Jimmy getting away. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. And then Earl comes up <clears throat> to clean it up. He literally is a free safety that can play like a linebacker. Like, look at how he notices. Right now he's in his zone, and he realizes the quarterback is going to get away. He's not even in a pass position, so he realizes I can go get him because he doesn't have his arm out ready to throw. He's just protecting himself, not trying to get hit. So he knew this is a perfect time to run in. Because as a DB, you really can't run in like that. But he has so much awareness that he was able to see the situation. Took the right gamble. All right, here we go. It's just a read option. Gives it to the running back. <clears throat> Look at Earl cleaning it up. The running back literally was going to bounce it outside. He had green grass. Look at Earl Thomas right here. It's funny that he's the only one with the pride to get there. No one else can. He sees it the whole way. He's quicker than everyone to the ball. Like He literally reads plays quicker than everyone. He's literally, there are guys that are five yards away from the ball that are not reading the play. He's literally 12 yards away and he's running by those guys that are closer to the ball to make the play. That just shows you how much better he is at reading plays than everyone else. Like, they're closer. They can, they're can. they supposed to be getting there before him. And look at him. He goes all the way around. Look at this. Let's see if he gets there. And he does. That's Josh Allen. That's a big boy. That's a 250-pound man, 6'5". Earl Thomas is about 5'10", maybe 200 pounds, soaked and wet. Like, I'm talking jumping in a pool with all his clothes on, jeans, cargo shirt, everything. And he's 200 pounds with all that. Josh Allen, on the other hand, is a big guy. You let this man who's almost half your size come down 
and do this to you. Like, I get he's throwing the ball. I get it. But, like, damn. that That's a bad one. I don't know. I can't tell who got the ball. It really doesn't matter who has it. It's not about that. All right, next play. Against Baker Mayfield. Let's see what he does. Look at that, Todd. Look at how Earl, he had to have known this was coming. He did his studies, or he just knows how to rush. Notice how he rushes upfield the whole time. He doesn't come inside. He literally does everything correctly. Look, he comes upfield. Most guys would have kept coming flat down the line. I want you guys to notice that. Most guys, he doesn't even play defensive end. You, I show you guys tape all the time. Defensive ends always crash down. Watch what he does do. Watch what he does. He doesn't crash inside. Look what he does. This is what defensive ends are supposed to do. You see this defensive end? He's supposed to be doing what he's doing right now. But he decided to crash inside. Earl does the right thing, and he forces it back in. That's what a defensive end is supposed to do, what Earl Thomas did. He played defensive end better than defensive ends do, or rush ends, whatever you use. That's what you're supposed to do. That's perfect. That's textbook. Look at, look at Earl. He's He already knows what's coming. He's timing the blitz perfectly, and he does. Times it perfectly. On the move, he's not going to be able to get rid of the ball. <laughs> Earl is literally the best free safety in the league. He timed it perfectly. Tannehill couldn't do anything about it. And we all know Tannehill is a bit of an athlete. He could have ran away, but he couldn't there because Earl was on him so quick on his front side. So even if he spun away, he wouldn't have been fast enough because Earl was at a full sprint. All right, here we go. If he, all right, play action. Let's see where Earl is. Oh, he's already coming up field. Yo, Earl Thomas, man, I'm telling you, this guy, his reactions are crazy. He's already running up before the ball is thrown, guys. I want you guys to see this. This guy, look at it. Watch this part of the screen. Watch how Earl's already coming up. The ball is just thrown. You see his head right here. You can't see it, but he's literally coming. This guy is still trying to catch the ball and bobbling the ball. There's Earl. Still bobbling it. Now he turns. You're done for. <laughs> Earl is such a good player, man. I don't understand why he's not in the NFL. But, oops, then again, I do. The reason is because of this. Six-time Pro Bowler. Lots of throws down the middle. It's intercepted. It's Earl Thomas. One of the anchors of the Legion of Boom. Ball comes out. It's Earl Thomas. The Super Bowl champion. Earl Thomas, welcome back. I just want to know off the jump, like how anxious are you just to even start the 2019 season after missing 12 regular season games last season? I'm very anxious. Uh, I've been preparing for this the whole summer. Uh, I've been having uh, a good off-season training program. I've been with the team already. Uh, I finished the spring ball, came back to... I don't like how she said, how do you feel about that? She should have said, what did you think was your best... Well, she said, what was your happiest season? Who cares what your happiest season was? It's not about being happy. Football is not a happy sport. It's about going out there and winning and doing your job with the 52 other men on the roster. It's not about just you and your happiness or anyone's happiness. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not about that. That's what these guys don't understand. Already so much with the emotions. Austin had my DB week. Uh, and now I'm, I'm ready to get back to Baltimore and get this thing kicked off. You had nine seasons in Seattle, six Pro Bowls individually, one Super Bowl with the team, right? When would you say you felt like you were at your most happiest in Seattle? It would have to be that Super Bowl year. See, this is what I'm talking about when I was saying the happiest. Like, who cares? It's just absurd. From the start of the training camp, uh, all the way out to the playoffs, and then we beat Denver and New York. And then right after that, I got a new contract, so... All those events, I feel like that was my most happiest time in Seattle. You feel like it was the most happiest? So basically, <clears throat> because of a chemical imbalance, he didn't do any research, he didn't crunch any numbers, he didn't do anything. It was just based off of a feeling. And this is the problem. So when you think of all of that, in your own words then, why are you no longer in Seattle? 
because he's overly emotional and doesn't know when to pull back punches. You throw a middle finger on national television, it makes you look crazy, especially if Pete Carroll doesn't do anything back. He's just standing there like, huh, what? There might be turmoil. There might be stuff behind the scenes, but we don't see it. All we see is you throwing that middle finger up, and that hurts your image. What's well, a business at the end of the day? Uh, Duh, you didn't know that before? Like, I just don't understand how he didn't know that before and how he didn't know that throwing that dirty bird up was going to ruin his career. I think my time just ran out. You, know? you think your time just ran out, or do you think that you acted overly emotional? In the front office, we just didn't, they didn't value me, I guess. Like, oh, they valued you. It's just that you're a hothead, and you turned 30 years old, and just like father time goes after everyone that came after you. Maybe not as hard. But I'm sorry to break it to you. When you were 22, you were a lot more athletic and just a better player than you were at 30. That's just what it is. Not saying that you're not a good player now. You're just a different type of player. It happens to everyone. They used to. And I had just talked to Coach Carroll. Uh, he was saying that I was trying to get me in the plans of getting a new contract. Yeah, dude. Well, he has to say that if he wants to keep you around for a little while. What is he going to say to you? Oh, you're just going to go out there. We ain't never going to pay you. You just got to do whatever we tell you, buddy. You ain't never going to contract. He's saying what any coach has to say. But I got hurt the next week, and I think I hurt myself, too, uh, you know, by my actions. Oh, you think? You think you hurt yourself by your actions as well? You think that a middle finger on national television wouldn't do something to your reputation? Did you really think that? You thought you would just go unscathed? Huh. I off the field. What do you mean by that? You know, I'm, I, I gave Pete, you know, the middle finger. Because I felt like he wasn't being honest with me. What was going through you your mind? You feel like they... he wasn't being honest with you? Like, what do you, how is that a feeling? That's either you thought or you knew he wasn't being honest with you. How can you feel something like that? What are you, a psychic? Like, I just don't understand that. Was he being honest with you or was he not? It's a yes or no question. There's no gray area. Like, this is what I hate about some of our people. It's like, why are you so overly emotional about some stuff like this? It just doesn't make sense. There's just too much. They were cutting you off the field and you were hurt. Can you imagine Jalen Ramsey and Earl Thomas on the same team? Those two emotional ass men. <laughs> yeah, I was basically talking to Pete. Because I knew what happened, because I've been through it before. I knew I knew it was broke. Like, when Pete came trying to, like, act like he, you know, concerned, I'm like... When he tried to come and act like he's concerned. He wasn't trying to act like he was concerned. He came to check and make sure you could come back and play. And it wasn't about concern. He wanted to see if his player was able to play so that he could make the next steps. <laughs> it wasn't about that. See, that's what I mean. He's bringing the emotion into it. It wasn't about that. At the end of the day, Pete Carroll still has a kosher game. So he needs to see your status. It ain't about checking to see or pretend how that he feels bad. Obviously, it's all for optics, but that's not what it was about. You won, bro. Like, you know? And then he says, you won, bro. You got hurt. He didn't win anything. They ended up losing that game. Like, they didn't. he didn't win. He lost a Pro Bowl Hall of Fame safety because you threw the middle finger up and he couldn't keep you around. He didn't really want to get rid of you. He just had to because of your actions. So at the time that you gave him the dirty bird, he said nothing. No, we haven't we haven't spoken. Do you regret giving Pete Carroll the dirty bird? I don't I don't regret my decision. If my teammates see that's crazy. How do you not regret that? Like it literally is the reason, or one of the reasons, why you're still not playing. That and the fight in Baltimore. But if you didn't hadn't given the middle finger, I bet you that fight in Baltimore wouldn't have been the way it was, where they kicked you off the team. But you have a track record, and that's what happens. Like, even if you didn't mean that, you shouldn't have said that. You got to know what to say in the moment. It's something called bad optics. Like, you can't, you don't want to be on the wrong side of that. And he is right now. I felt like it was towards them. I regret that part. Well, if you're on a cart 50 yards away from the sideline, you're sending a middle finger to your sideline. We don't know who you're directing at or directing it at. We don't know until you said it was at Pete. But, like, as a player, you don't know. You're like, what the hell is he doing? But I don't regret doing it to Pete. Obviously, y'all. See, like, right there, I don't agree with that. Even if you don't think that's true, even if you don't feel that way, you have to say it. I regret doing it. You have to. If you want to play in the league again, you have to say, I do regret doing it. That's it.
and just be the bigger man. In a Super Bowl together, right. you went back to another Super Bowl the following year. I mean, to a lot of people looking in, that should be the best of time. So how, given all that level of accomplishment, are you guys not seeing eye to eye? I feel like, we, I mean, we've got to walk. Oh, his first words were, I feel like, instead of, I think it's because... So everything is based on a chemical imbalance. So you really can't even like take what he's saying for what it is because feelings change from a minute to second, year to year. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you can't control that. Like that's something that happens on the inside. So you can't go based on that, especially when it comes to football. Like what are the facts? Like tell me the facts here. I don't want to know the feelings. Tell me the facts of the matter. Talk with each other for the rest of our lives because we want a Super Bowl together. But they'll love you one minute and then they'll hate you the next. They'll so love like, you one minute, they'll hate you the next. When what does that have to do with you playing football? Even if say that was true. Say, oh my coach loves me now and he hates me then. How does that that doesn't affect you what you do on the field? It shouldn't affect like, your play. If anything, it should make you play harder. Like, but that that's why. It's just crazy. Like that's what was our relationship. How? How? I don't understand. Just right? And even Joe Cena is saying, I don't understand. Because it doesn't make any sense. Game. That's just how it is. I'm not speaking for every coach. Yeah. That's just my experience. But so, he, it's just his experience. So, it's just crazy. His microcosm experience. So, you can't even go based on that. I would dismiss what he just said. It's such a strong word, right? right. So, we, I want you to... Right. He's using the word hate. And uh, Let's see if he, he retracts that, which he probably will. Explain I'm not that. sure. I, I don't know if he. I don't want to say that it would be hate. But you did say hate, though. <laughs> it was just uh, we didn't see eye to eye on. on that the, is a big time backpedal right there. A lot of things like work, the work ethic. Like sometimes I just I didn't want to practice, especially when I, they weren't paying me. I wasn't practicing like that. All right, so like that is so dumb. You signed a contract with them to play and practice and do that. You may not like what it is at the point of where the contract was then, but you signed that contract years before then, so you're obligated to practice and play that contract out. So I never understand when these athletes like sign a contract and then years down the line, they're mad about the contract they signed knowing what it was gonna be, and they're like, oh, I don't wanna do this anymore, I want more money. It's like, dude, you signed that contract. I just don't get it, bro. Now your agent's in your ear telling you not to play. Now it's messing you all up. I, like, I just don't get it. He wasn't feeling it. And, you know, just the gap just Why? spread, yeah. Is there any way that your time in Seattle was misunderstood? That's a hard question. Uh, I feel like people are going to always misunderstand you if they don't know you. You feel like people always misunderstand you if they don't know you. That doesn't even make sense. If I don't know anyone, I'm not going to misunderstand them because I don't know them. They're not on my mind. So that doesn't make sense. Like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. I, I just definitely just try to give my best. Did you feel He's basically saying that to absolve him of any accountability. Like, basically. When you were in Seattle. Yeah, I mean, the golden years, like, yeah, people was all on the Earl Thomas bandwagon. And Area 29. Area 29. And, you know, along with L.O.B. Uh, but it just ended, it ended different. Uh, because you ended it. <laughs> like... The Ravens will sign former Seahawks safety Earl Thomas. A huge record-setting type deal. This dude has earned his cash. Ultimately, you ended up signing a four-year, $55 million deal with the Ravens. $15 million. And then he squandered that. More than you had before. But I'm curious, how did you feel like during the free agency period that you were regarded by teams other than the Baltimore Ravens? As far as not getting picked up? Well, I mean, yeah, it took yeah, a while. It took a while. It, it it took a while. Uh, don't you ask yourself why that was? Like, a man of your talent, no team wanted to pick you up, and you don't know why that was. You need to check that attitude, man. If you were a better person, a nicer person, a better teammate, guys would be picking you up left and right. But... You need to, he needs to look in the mirror, man. You don't want to be that guy 10 years, 20 years down the road. We look at you like, damn, you're such a waste of talent, man. What happened to you? Remember when 50 Cent said, damn, homie, in high school you was the man, homie. The hell happened to you? 
Yeah, it's going to be him if he doesn't get his mind right, man. Because he's got at least another 5, 10 years to play if he wants. But if he's acting like this, he's going to have no years left. I'm like, what is going on? Because me and Landon have the same agent. Yeah, you know, and see, Landon is playing right now. And Landon is like not even half the player that Earl is. But guess what? Landon's a better person, a better teammate. And he just knows how to handle situations. That's why he's in the league. It's not because he's a better player than you. He's just easier to handle and be around. He plays well with others. Before my agent called me, hung up. I'm like, what? Like, what is going on? Wait, wait. They like, there are a bunch of guys that don't want to play with Earl Thomas. Like, as the player, they just don't want to play with him because they don't like him. He's just not a cool person to be around. He's just uptight. He's just an, he's an asshole, bro. He doesn't take accountability. He blames everyone else. Like, when you're playing on a team and you can't be like, man, man I messed up. Teammates are not going to like you if you can't just own up to a mistake and you always want to blame your teammates and you never want to act like you make a mistake, like you're perfect. No one's going to want to play with you, bro. That goes for anyone. Pause your live out. I guess it was, it was, he said his service got lost. Oh, okay, okay. But I was like, man, what happened? Like, is he trying to shoot a slug at me? Like, what is going on? <laughs> and uh, I was going to go to KC on a one-year deal. Huh? I had talked to Coach uh, Andy Reid. And Andy Reid only wanted you for one year. He didn't even want to commit with you. And Andy Reid commits to a lot of people. And, uh, we had a conversation. And I committed. But then the next day, I woke up. Hey, Dave called me and said we had a better deal. And he told me the numbers. I said, I'm taking that. <laughs> <laughs> so did you call Andy Reid and say, just kidding? No, my agents, Drew and Dave called him. Uh-huh. And he, he was cool with it. Of course, he knew that it was a business decision. Mm -hmm. you know? Does Patrick Mahomes know this story? He, he don't care. He got the honey badger. He got the honey badger. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like how he said that, though. He, he uh, threw some light on the honey badger, though. I like that. So how would you say your transition is, moving your life, acclimating to being a Baltimore Raven in the black and purple? Uh, it's different from the west to the east. It's definitely different. But I, I'm definitely not comfortable in the meetings, especially they put me on the spot. I'm like, bro, somebody tell me, like, I don't know. Oh, they put you on the spot? Like, how, how does that work? Well, it's just a little pressure so I can stay in my playbook. Mm. So they'll, they'll call me out. Most of the time, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm more, right. I, I have to get on the field. Yes. I like to get on the field. Yeah. And let me walk through it. Let me see it a couple of times. Let me rep it out. Yeah. And then I get it. Yeah. And I'm stubborn. I'm, that, that's just my game. I know it. See, yeah. and he just said it. He's stubborn, bro. Like, you can't be a football player and a teammate and be stubborn. That's for, that's those are the words right out of his mouth, and basically that that's why he's not in the league because he's stubborn, bro. You can't be stubborn, like that. That's the last thing you can be. So now I basically just heard what I needed to hear. Well, let's finish this out. But they they'll keep me on my toes. Do you feel like your arrival in Baltimore has been too quiet or under the radar? That's that's how I like it. Like let me slip under the, under the radar and just surprise everybody. And ever since, he got kicked off the team for fighting with a teammate. Another sad, sad story of a NFL player that could have been something special.